So here we are this morning, we're in a tattoo parlor and the first thing we've come across is this speaker system here. So first glance, it's got a two core cable. Um, if you have a look at the back, um, just so you can see it there, class two label. Um, it's got that model number and uh, electrical safety kind of notice and things like that. So all seemed well, all looks okay. But as soon as we came to check the fuse, an item like this, two core cable with a 0.75 flex, normally with this you'd expect to see a three or a five amp fuse. And in there is a 13 amp fuse. Now also, this 13 amp fuse, it's quite hard to tell from the video here. Um, the, the colors are, are faded. Normally you'd expect to see a kind of quite a dark brown, um, vivid color on that fuse. Um, from experience, I can spot that a mile off that that's a fake fuse. It, it's a better quality fake fuse than you've seen. There's no, um, there's a tiny bit. Yeah, you can just see the bit of fuse wire pointing out from under the caps there, but it, it is a better quality fuse than you would come. They also, the other thing to spot with um, fake fuses, well, let's pick that up there. Everything to spot with the fuses is these ones, the genuine fuses, the caps on the end tend to be like a brushed, um, like a matted um, color. Whereas on a fake fuse, uh, or counterfeit fuse, so they tend to be shiny metal. So that's one way of finding it out. So we've already tested this, um, this ring light up here. So it all checks out okay and the extension need. So I don't think there's anything wrong with the appliance. We would run a test in it in a minute, but I think you know, we're obviously gonna have to put a new fuse in it. Sometimes a fuse also, you know, when it's a wrong rating or it's a counterfeit fuse, it often points towards the item probably being substandard as well. But it all seems okay with the item. So we'll run a test for it anyway in the moment, insulation test and uh, see what we get. So here we are in a different treatment room now, and there's a digital ultrasonic cleaner. I've seen these before, it cleans all their uh, tattoo tools and things like that, and uh, sterilizers and things like that. But then we come across the IEC cable that's plugged into it. And as you can see here, um, straight away, you've got an insulated earth pin, which is straight away, um, uh, sets the alarm bells ringing. That should either be uh, on this item because it's class one that should be a solid metal pin and also you can see there that the earth pin should be longer than the live and neutral pins underneath um, which it isn't it's the same length um, so it was ever so slightly longer as you can see there but I'm going to pop it through my little uh, trusty um, pin checker card which I'll show you in a minute which is a really handy thing if you can get hold of um, and it will check the pins for you. Also, another dodgy fuse. It doesn't even say fuse, it says FUS. Um, but again, you can spot these things a mile away. You know, 13 amp, the print is all off. There's, there's no Aster marking on it. Uh, that's, that's quite a bad uh, example there of a dodgy fuse. So we are not doing very well here today, so. There's a AC-DC adapter here with a figure of eight cable plugged into it. It's got one of these cheap Chinese unfused plugs on it there with an earth pin snapped off as well. So that needs to go. And then here as well, got a, a ring light with a two pin Chinese plug which is jammed into one of these adapters. These are also death traps. So you can see here, yeah, they've screwed extension leads into the wall, but they've screwed it through the extension lead. So you can see there how close that one is to the pins and the same there. And the risk you've got with that, and I'm not even going to touch them, but the risk you've got with that is that they could have drilled that through and be touching the live or neutral uh, bars behind, inside the extension lead. So when that's plugged in, there's a chance that those screws could become live, uh, which is a massive hazard. Um, and also where they've screwed it in there just means that the plug, when you plug something in there, the plug doesn't seat into the socket properly, it sticks out. Um, they've done it over there as well. 
a couple of screws and then they daisy chain kind of a couple of extension leads um, there. So if we ever see that, um, most definitely a fail. Um, really dangerous that. Um, can't emphasise that enough. So definite fails. So I've just been into that job uh, that was in a tattoo parlour and some of the electrics in there were shocking. What I've found in there is there was a combination of like cheap Chinese adapters, non-fused plugs, IEC cables with sleeved earths and there was other things as well where the guy had wired in electrics himself so he'd screwed through extension leads and um, there were some plugs up there that were wired by himself which were the worst I've ever seen. So that, that's why a visual inspection on a PAT test is so important. There's so much stuff and hazards you'll flag up with a visual inspection before you've even plugged the item into your machine. I would say 90-95% of item fails I get are from uh, visual checks and that's why it's so important you know getting the right fuses in there you know checking for those sleeved earth pins and things like that so hopefully you pick something up from that video off to the next job now and hopefully this one will be a little bit more straightforward but you never know what you're walking into